Today I'm going to show you how to make this 12 volt lithium battery. One of the most frequent questions on my channel is how to make 12 volts using lithium batteries. And most of the time the answer is you really, you can't unless you use lithium iron phosphate. You see, lithium cobalt oxide, which are what these 18650s are, is becoming very, very popular. The problem is that they are 3.7 volt nominal and using three of them is too low of a voltage and using four of them is too high. So the target voltage is right in between three cells and four cells in series. And there is just too many issues associated in trying to make 12 volts, right? So the answer are lithium iron phosphate. This lithium chemistry is a 3.2 volt nominal voltage. And so using four of them perfectly matches the 12 volts that come out of six cells uh, made out of lead acid, which means that they're compatible with all the 12 volt legacy equipment. So the only problem is that lithium iron phosphate is not as popular as lithium cobalt oxide. And so for that reason, they're kind of hard to get. And when you do find them, they are kind of expensive. Well, that is until now, as recently Tom Ammerman has gotten his hands on a few pallets of these K2 Energy 26650 cells. So he's got a few uh, versions of them. Here is the LFP 26650 EVs. Uh, these are kind of automotive, right? That's why it has the EV in there. And he's got two versions of that. He's got some that are 3700 milliamp hours, some that are 3200 milliamp hours. Then there are the LFP 26650Ps, and those stand for power. Those are rated at 150 amps, right? So these are power. They're smaller, 2850 uh, milliamp hours, and then 2600 milliamp hours. So those also come into flavors and he's pretty much giving them like really really cheap here you can get 20 cells for 60 bucks 50 bucks 60 yeah so 60 and 50 uh and then he's got some of the 18650s uh which typically are don't come in lithium iron phosphate but you know there are some rare instances like these ones that are not very popular but uh here we have some 18650s so that you can get them he's also selling 24 of those for 54 dollars so let me show you how you can use these to make 12 volts i kind of accidentally started this new trend of putting battery packs together using pcb boards i share all my projects in a facebook group called jehu's diy powerwalls and so others have started developing their own versions of these printed circuit boards such is the case as this one made by nate patel he made a 4s uh version of the board for 26650 which are exactly the cells that we have to work with today he sent me a total of 10 boards, which will allow me to house 40 cells. All I had to do was put them together uh, by soldering all the components that he sent. Soldering all the components is pretty straightforward. And installing the batteries, well, that's even easier. I mean, that's the whole point of this PCB kit. And pretty soon, you have the 10 boards assembled. What do you want? What do you want? Hey, why are you biting me? Don't bite me. Hey, hey, no biting, no biting, no biting. <laughs> right, so here are the 10 boards. Uh, I, uh, something to notice here is that these right here are where I am planning to remove the energy from the pack. Uh, the energy transfer is from one of the boards through these a couple of these uh standoffs but then they go through these uh fuses right so on this fuse is where i am going to plan to remove the the power i'd have to use a bigger fuse because as you can see here some melting <laughs> because the, i had a the four amp fuse trying to pull push you know 20 amps through it and it just melted so these ones are rated at 30 two of them 30 you should be able to do 60 uh, that should be enough to remove 
a maximum of 40 that uh, the whole pack should be able to provide because these are rated at four amps, the glass fuses. All right, so once you do that, then you could do whatever you want with this. Here are the, the leads. These are, uh, you know, the balance leads. They connect on the back over here to each individual board, uh, which w allows you to use a charger like this to charge it. That's how I did. I topped it right off. I plugged this plug in right here. And then the other thing here. But uh, also another thing that you might want to do is put it in a box. So let's do that. I have this box here, which I've been working on. Here we go. Here's a box. Uh, I put a meter in here and then I put the BMS. This is a 60 amp BMS. So let's install this battery pack in there. We basically just do this. Four millimeter screws, put them through the holes there. Go. There's a couple of these guys front over here. There we go. All right. After that, so to test the uh, BMS here, what you do is you set your uh, meter here, right, and then you set it to uh, check continuity with the beep. There we go. So then you check from one side to the other, and look. Uh, there's no power going through the MOSFETs there, right? So that means they're off. So then what you do is you connect the uh, the power, right? This one I did it backwards. This, this is the, the, the red one, but that's a negative. So you gotta make sure you connect the negative. All right, so now the cells are connected and the MOSFETs should be powered. You know, the microcontroller or whatever. Look at that. There we go. Good works. Which means that now you can connect the main cables. There we go. I know there's a lot of space here. You could probably cram way more batteries in here. I estimate that you can do about 16 of these modules in here. So a little bit over half a kilowatt hour of uh, battery here um, okay so then the next thing is to connect this thing here BAM so now we just have to adjust the battery meter um, so there's 10 cells let's look at the uh, batteryhookup.com these are 3200 milliamp hours times yeah sometimes 10 then it's 32 amp hours so this is a 32 amp hour let's see how we can adjust it do is there we go come on over power protection uh we're not gonna put that on there it does have the ability to use a uh, relay on here but we're not gonna use it oh so that's how you said it oh there we go 100% 32 amp hours so there we go now this is accurate it says it's got 32 amp hours 13.43 volts let's put a load on it all right so now we are ready to test our battery here got our 12 volt inverter a thousand watts 2000 watt surge here's our battery It's 32 amp hours uh, about 400 watt hours so with four amp fuses this should only be able to deliver about 40 amps uh, about 400 watts of power right 1c um, so that's what we're going to test the load that i have here is a um some just some lights so let's let's test this guy here we go Woo! There we go. One light is shining. It's drawing 8 amps, 100 watts. There we go. Let's do the other one. Bam! 
21 amps. Um, 250 watts. Hmm. Okay, so everything's working fine. Let's do another light. I added an extra light. Whoa. 420 watts. There we go. 37 amps. So that is pretty close to the uh, to the max. To the max that this battery is going to put out. And again, the reason why and the reason why, of course, is even though the BMS will handle 60 amps, the cables will handle more, probably, you know, these are 8 gauge, uh, is that each cell here has a 4 amp fuse. Yeah, and so anything over 40 amps, then it's more than 4 amps per glass fuse, which then they'll start, they're heating up, and then eventually they'll, they'll blow. But that's what you want because you want to prevent these holders from melting and the contacts here are pretty weak so they can they start getting hot too hot after about you know after five amps or so so this way it's fuse where fuses will blow before star stuff starts melting now of course if you want to power more the 40 amps if you want to do 80 amps then all you have to do is two of these stacks in a box in a bigger box or you know there's ways that you can cram probably f uh, 20 of these things in this same box I just you know I just I just only had 10 of these and this is a box that I had laying around so I just built that I just used this to build this uh, thing just to show you guys how you can very easily build a 12 volt battery that can then be used pretty much as a 12 volt battery you can charge this off of an alternator this has got um, you know this now has multiple levels of safety you can even add safety you can put a relay or a contactor have this trigger it on and off let's ride 12, oh man, this thing sucks. 12 volt battery. Um, 40 amps. There we go. 12 volt, 40 amps. Thank you for watching this video for a full list of all the components I use on this project. Look down on this video description. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. Alright, so this battery is kind of dead. So in order to charge it, you can totally charge it like a lead acid battery. You can, you know, you don't have to worry about the individual cell uh, voltages. So I actually have my PowerLab 6 here set to PV, right? So lead acid, uh, and it's gonna charge, I don't know, somewhere around 14 volts or something like that. And I'm putting about seven and a half amps about a hundred watts and the meter here is pretty much agreeing with that I haven't set up the uh, the whole meter here we'll do that once it charges I'll set it up and then we'll discharge test it and then we'll make sure of that but here we go charging lithium iron phosphate just like you would uh, lead acid